Ja. Twenty twenty two was a really busy year for Element Optics, with so much happening behind the scenes. And by the time November rolled around, we were all in need of a team building getaway somewhere remote. With the Theos, Hyper 7, Helix HD and Helix HDLR all nearing the finish line, the decision was made to meet up in my home country, South Africa, to put the final seal of approval on the Helix HDLR by using it for what it was designed for, a planes game hunt in the mountains. South Africa is a very diverse country in terms of climates, cultures, languages, flora and fauna and while many visitors tend to flock here for a relaxed holiday on the beach or to see the big five, hunting forms the backbone of the tourism industry. With so many sought after species spread over such a large area, flexible hunting seasons and very affordable rates. When Shane Keller, Henrik Bengtsson and Johan Axelsson arrived in Port Elizabeth after long flights from the US and Europe, we made a beeline for ox wagon hunting safaris and found ourselves sitting around a fire with beers in hand, catching up and chatting about plans for the following day. So we finally made it. We made it to our hunting spot. It's been a long couple days. Started in Arizona to New Jersey, New Jersey to Johannesburg. Spent the night in Johannesburg Woke up in the morning, flew to Port Elizabeth where I met Matt. Was able to spend the spend the day with Matt, get a good night's rest, and then this morning or this afternoon we picked up Johan and Henrik from Sweden. Got in the car, about a three hour drive from Port Elizabeth, and we're here. Got a nice cold beer sitting in, right here in front of the fire pit, and excited uh, excited to wake up early tomorrow and, and get at it. I knew if I did, I'd have to start all. Tonight we have our dinner catered for by Anton and Kutsia of Oxwagon Hunting Safaris who will also be guiding us on our hunt tomorrow. This is also a working sheep farm which can only mean one thing, some of the best lamb you'll ever taste in your life. So this is some lamb, cutlets and there's some venison sausage. You might think that after such a long journey the guys might want to crash in bed but we've still got some energy left, so we head out on a quick night drive with the thermal. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'll be your eyes in the sky. Oh <laughs> yeah? You have I, have, I have like built-in night vision. Certain species tend to be easier to find at night than during the day. Fallow deer are one of the few deer species that we have in South Africa and were introduced to this area over 100 years ago. This is a Dika, one of the tiny 10. But what gets us most excited is the herd of springbuck that we see on a hillside. This is one of the antelope species that we'll be going after tomorrow, so it's good to see them out in numbers. Yeah, that's good news for tomorrow. Gotta keep, a, keep our eyes open. There you go. You gonna stay here and watch them all night so we know where to go? Yeah, sure, I can do that. <laughs> sure. Despite the late night, we find ourselves full of energy the next morning. We're pretty excited to take first blood with the Helix HDLR. We've been working on the scope for months, but this is the first time that we're all together to test a prototype out in the field, and we're keen to see how it performs. Lab testing can only show you so much, but the real seal of approval will come after we've put it through its paces out in the bush. Methods of hunting can differ greatly depending on where you are and what you're hunting. Here in the mountains where it's a little bit more open and a little harder to stalk in close, we tend to prefer finding a high vantage point, glassing patiently, picking an animal, and then either closing the distance a little or setting up in a comfortable position further away where you're less likely to spook the animals. Must be the HDLR's exposed elevation turret and zero stop caters to the style of hunting very well and we'd be getting our first opportunity to test it out early on.
Mountain reedbuck are plentiful in this area, but that doesn't make them easy to hunt. They belong in these mountains and blend in so well with the grass that you have to be wide awake to spot them, but that makes the hunt all the more rewarding. We make our way to the top of the hill and hope that we can spot them on the opposite side. These rocks may provide a really good place for us to rest the rifle for a shot, and if not, we have the tripod. No chance of a prone shot from up here. Just as we hoped, the herd is spotted just a few hundred meters below us, and Johan is able to find a nice flat rock to rest on. I'm behind the camera here, and unfortunately I focus on the wrong animal, so we don't get any usable footage. The shot lands a little far forward and he bolts, but we know he'll go down eventually, and we start our slow descent down the mountain. He could have gone anywhere and blends in so well with the grass and rocks here that we could easily walk right past him without even knowing it. The Helix HDLR ends up being a really useful tool for glassing around with the 2 to 16 magnification range and HD glass giving us really good clarity and a very versatile zoom range. It's been a long recovery process and we've walked over 6 kilometers on foot but we eventually find him and we're all very happy to be able to tick Johan's animal off the list. Hello, we're out here hunting Mountain Rebook in South Africa, an amazing place. Uh, this is a typical animal for this area and it's a perfect specimen. We're only here hunting for one day, uh, so we're really happy we're able to find this animal and get it down. Oh, that's good. That's good awesome. Good. Yep. Got him. That's get some water. water. Yeah, it felt like we were never going to get him for a while there, so yeah, happy was, we got him. That was awesome. That was cool to watch the whole thing by binoculars. <sighs> We still have two more animals to get today and the sun keeps beating down hotter and hotter. So we climb straight back into the truck and head further up the mountain in an attempt to get something for Shane before lunchtime. We spot a herd of wildebeest and contemplate whether or not to shoot one, but they look like they're on the move and we aren't too keen to risk a long shot in the wind on one of these tough animals. We walk further along the plateau, stopping every now and again to peek over the hill and look around, and eventually we find what we're looking for. A herd of impala with some nice rams in the group. We need to find a place to set up where we're within 600 yards and have a stable shooting position, and Shane keeps watching the gap looking for a ram. For a moment he stands up under the tree, perfectly broadside, but we take a little bit too long calculating a firing solution and we miss our chance. They're about 500, 550 yards or meters away. And it took a second to get set up and then we got set up. They just kind of got spooked and got behind some thick stuff and went right over the edge. So you win some, you lose some. But that was fun. Adrenaline went, went up, so it's good stuff. With it nearing midday now, we're just about ready to head back down for a lunch break, but we decide to keep moving just a little longer in the hope that we might spot another herd just over the next hill. And we couldn't have scripted it better. Right in the open, just a couple hundred yards away, we find a blessed buck ram standing broadside out in the open by himself. <laughs> nice. Well, that happened quick. That was uh, that was amazing. That was that was really cool. Look at this guy. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Nice shot. Well, my first kill in South Africa. Congratulations. That was amazing. I hope you. Awesome did. job. Well, well shot. Well done. Beautiful buck. That's so cool. We got up to the blessed buck here and 
noticed the uh, exit wound hadn't quite made it all the way through. Cut out the bullet right here, which is really neat. Flip it over and see the quartering shot. It uh, hit it right above uh, the forearm and looked like a good shot and it went down quick. All right, so we've been out here all day, about lunchtime, and uh, thought about heading back, but instead we said, let's go drive up the road and make one more pass. And about five minutes later, we saw this guy and we got out of the truck, put a stock on him, got it downwind from him, and got set up, 250 yard shot, uh, broadside. He didn't go but 20 yards and dropped. Uh, so it was a real great experience, it happened so quick, but uh, it was just amazing to see it all come through. You know, one thing I like to do with our optics, uh, before we put them uh, you know, out for the public and put them in mass production, we get a lot of the prototypes and then put them in the field like we are doing today. So this model is the HDLR uh, with the capped low profile windage turret and then it still has the uh, uh, exposed elevation turret so it's great you know it's a great scope for you know situations like this where you might have a hundred yard shot you might have a five six hundred yard shot so you can dial it in precisely. He was in some thick covers so I needed as much field of view as I could get so I had the scope turned down to two three power found the found the animal was able to turn my magnification up to you know about that 12 14 range and really dial in make sure the shot placement was right and took a deep breath exhaled and pulled the trigger and it uh, and everything happened like it was supposed to very pleased with the way it performed i dialed it uh, from 100 to 250 and it uh, it performed like it should time for a well-earned lunch and we head down the mountain again spotting plenty more animals on the way Well, we just taking a bit of a lunch break here at the at the Oxwagon camp. Um, it's really nice to sit down. We've had a, a long morning. We've had all had a little bit of sunburn and a uh, little bit of heat stroke, I'd say. So we're very, very tired, but yeah, we'll take a break. We'll have something cool to drink, have lunch, and then um, probably head out at 2 p.m. or so. Um, hopefully by then it's cooler. See, it's a little bit overcast now, so hopefully it brings the temperature down a bit. We head out after lunch and plan to shoot some steel until everything cools down a bit. But on our way, we spot a herd of springbuck, probably the same herd that we'd spotted through the thermal the previous night, and Henrik sets up hoping to get an opportunity. We have to be careful to avoid the copper springbuck and the ewes. Easier said than done when both the rams and the ewes have horns, and we end up being a little bit too hesitant as the herd moves over the hill. Further up the valley, we see a number of kudu bulls. Some of these are quite young, so we leave them well alone. It's always a privilege to see a bachelor herd of kudu bulls like this, and it's a reminder of why they are so sought after. They're just such beautiful animals. Well, we've had a really good morning's hunt, and uh, it's just started to get nice and cool now. Um, actually, rain's starting to come down, but uh, we've come up to a spot that I often come to do some like trajectory validation for rifles do a bit of long range shooting we've set some gongs out at I, th I think it's around 650 meters or so maybe closer to 700 and uh, we've got a 20 inch gong and we've got an 8 inch gong so it should be a nice challenge for some of these rifles um, but yeah just thought we get some trigger time feel some recoil because when you're hunting like this you might get one or two shots in a day but there's nothing like just lying down sending lead down range and hearing that that sound come back so let's have some fun shall we 3.7 i'm going to give it nothing for wind i don't think it'll do much with this 300 tell me when you want to hit the cord okay nailed it you see the dead dead center eh? yeah. That's <laughs> so cool. And I want to do one on that small gong and see if I can get it. Well, let me uh, let me get the camera. It should on that. be so close, distance-wise. Okay, I mean, the camera's on it. Hit it.
this point, we had been working on the Fios for about three years, and we'd only recently finalized the design, so it was great for us to all get together and use it for what it was truly designed for. Precision shooting at extended ranges, where mechanical reliability, optical clarity, and ease of use were all of utmost importance. Of course, we were primarily here to test the Helix HDLR, and being the long-range version of this model, we wanted to get some trigger time in and really see how it compared to the far more expensive Theos. It may not have the zoom capabilities of the Theos, but the fine reticle and HD glass make it more than capable at these distances, and the turrets track flawlessly. But enough playing around, we still needed to find an animal for Henrik, and time was running out, so we head up a valley on foot and try to find that herd of springbuck that had slipped away from us earlier. With the weather now a little bit cooler and the wind having died down, conditions are perfect and we hope to get a chance. We spot a herd of springbuck and blessbuck all sort of mixed together and with the wind as dead as it is, it's all a case of trying to find a good shooting position and getting on the right animal. Yeah, under the neck. It takes us quite a while to find a shootable ram. This one was quite young, but still a good eating size, so Henry gets settled and makes the shot count. The other guy is just standing there, watching. It's moving a little bit now. A little bit. It's not moving. Alright. The 11th hour, hey? As we're yeah. using light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Alright. Let's take a walk. Yeah, it just dropped. Alright. Let's go up and see it. We're probably gonna have a bit of a hike. Guess it's Do you have a reference mark? Yeah. I'm gonna walk you in there. Spotting scope Shane. That's right. So do best. The shot was from a little bit over 300 yards and at a very steep angle, so it was going to be a good hike up the mountain, and we tried to make a mental note of where it fell. Thankfully, with the white stomach, we were able to find it pretty easily. You were just too late to smell the candy floss at the back. But yeah. We've been out all day, and uh, Shane and Juan they got their shot and uh, managed to put down an one animal each and then uh, we were getting close to last light so we went out uh, one last try to uh, to get a stalk we came up here in the uh, in the hills we managed to see some uh, west buck and some uh, mountain rebuck and uh, we uh, I, I laid prone down in the valley and I managed to get the shot and then yeah it just instantly dropped so I'm, I'm happy about that so we're shooting at a really steep angle upwards. So we actually took off a few clicks, and uh, as when I shot it, it just dropped perfectly. So we're lucky that we uh, we measured the angle correctly and uh, got that turret dialed in. Yeah, so that's the day wrapped up, and now we're ready to get back to camp and uh, have dinner and just talk through the day and uh, just talk about how everything went and how it, the optics and the rifles performed. It's been a really successful day with three different antelope species down, one for each of the guys. That, I think, is something to celebrate. I am cooking for everyone tonight and will be treating the guys to another South African braai with lamb chops, chicken sasatis, venison vorsch, garlic bread and corn on the cob, all cooked over the fire. With all our objectives achieved in a single day, we're really happy with how things have turned out and itching to share the new Helix HD and Helix HDLR with the rest of the world. We'll sleep well tonight with big smiles on our faces. <laughs>